let's start editing this photo. First of all, I'm going to put a crop here, 191 by 1. It was already there, but I typed it so you can see how to put the ratio here. And just grab these corners here and move the crop tool a little bit. And I want to straighten this part of the horizon. So click on the level and drag it. I think it's around 1.2 degrees. It's working. And control enter or click here to make the changes okay now that our photo is cropped let's create a duplicate so the best way to do it is click on the layer hold drag and drag it to the plus sign here it will create a duplicate or control J on a Windows or Command J on a Mac or just go to layers duplicate layer and it will duplicate your layers to delete one layer just take it here and move it to the recycle bin or hit delete key let's unlock this one so here if it's locked you cannot do anything on it you can crop it, but you cannot draw on it, you cannot brush it, you cannot use your clone tool. So unlock it. And the first thing that I want to do is just remove this patch of mud here. It's a little disturbing. So we are going to use the healing brush tool. We have it here. You have a lot of options here, you can play with it. but what works best for now is just the healing brush, spot healing brush, is going to analyze this image and content to where fill this entire selection that I've made. And now it's gone. It's like magic, Photoshop magic, I know. So this is before, this is after. It's not a big deal, but it it's an eye-catcher in the end you'll see so we were talking about adjustment layers let's create some adjustment layers and we can brighten this image a little bit the first one that I want to use is levels I can do a destructive way of applying levels to this image or a non-destructive way let me show you both so if you go to image adjustments levels this will pop up and what this graph do basically from the absolute black to the absolute white you can move your image so you can see if i'm dragging from the white part here on the right the image brightens up if i'm moving from the left that's the dark side yeah, I know, references here. But if I click OK, then the entire image is modified. And I cannot come back to that if I want to edit something. So let's hit Ctrl Z. Well, I didn't apply anything, but nonetheless. And click here on the layers. So you have adjustments and we have levels. If you click that, you'll see that a new layer will appear with a mask already on it. You have the same options here. You can move it and drag it a little bit. Same for your blacks. But with this level, I just want to bring more luminosity to this. And don't worry if you're burning your image on the sky here. What I want to do is just hit on this um, hills here. So Let's do like this. It's like dodge and burning, but actually we are going to put it on a layer. So if we revert this mask using Control I or Command I on a Mac and then paint over it, 
let's see what's happening you can see that our image starts to brighten a little bit well I exaggerate here just to show you the difference yeah so what are the options for this brush you have here the opacity I usually take it to 50% opacity so I can if you have like for example you can see multiple strikes until it makes 100% and then what I usually do I change the format of the tip of the brush so I right click on it and just squeeze this in and move this at an angle yeah okay so hardness is 0% that will give us a soft brush the size well I'll show you now how to change your size brush without going here and change like this you just use your keys on your keyboard to make it bigger so why do I want to use a mask because if I mess something up like this, I can hit X, change back to black here, and just paint it over. You see, it's already starting to look good. Paint over, here I like it like this. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then we will use a little bit of dodge and burn anyhow, but this will give us the option of coming back you know let's start from the beginning here because I exaggerated on so many levels here so to fill up a mask hit shift backspace and this will pop up here go to your foreground color that is white here and click OK and now you'll see that the mask is 100% white yeah control I so we can invert it and with white let's just paint a little bit here Make your brush a little smaller here. And don't worry if you're messing up here. As I told you, you can come back. Hit X, going on like this, and Control Zero to make it fit the screen. Here I can see part of some glowing. So you need to be careful here on the edges. So let's see. This is before, and this is after. So. If you think this is too much, you have the option of taking back and modify. And also, you have the opacity. So, before, after before after you already see the, the eyes catching on these hills here now let me show you a different way of working with this and you can create an even better adjustment that is the curve adjustment as you can see the graph is similar but you adjust the points throughout an image tonal range so you can put more points so you have the absolute darkness here absolute whiteness here 
and if you do like this for example you'll see that the image starts to brighten if you do like this then your image is going darker but because this is a graph you can do a nest shape so you can on your black side you can experiment here i really liked playing with this when i was first learning photoshop so you can see more or less the adjustments here and it's already starting to look nice so you can do like this okay it's looking good now the sky is blown up a little but don't worry you have masks so let's create a bigger brush here and you can bring back some details let's take the opacity to 100 percent and that's good now the best part here is that you can also apply the levels so let's see a before and after from the main image so this is before this is after it's already eye-catching if you hit control one or command one you can zoom in to 100 percent i think this green here is too strong so let's try to take the opacity even lower Okay, I think it's better now. Let's see. Before, after. And now it's more realistic. Now, let's tackle this haze here. So, the weather was very cloudy when I took this photo, with some patches of sun through the um, clouds. So... <clears throat> This creates like a mist or a fog on this far away object. And let's try to use the burn tool. What the burn tool does, it takes the highlights, that basically it's this whitey colors here on the greens, and dial them down. Now, this is a destructive way of doing this. So, if, for example, you hit here, see it's already looking good. So, if you hit like this, then you're committing to it. And you need to control Z to undo this work. So, let's try to edit this as best as we can. And again, the exposure is 12% only on shadows. Actually, I would like some mid-tones. So you can play with this tool as well. Let's create a bigger. So because it's 12%, then I don't need to worry about messing up because it's not going to be that obvious so let's see this is before and this is after you can see that this patch of trees here are looking better okay let's move in the background a little bit and try to do the same thing here easy you don't want to overdo it Otherwise, it's going to look crappy. So you see 12%, 12%, that's 24% there, I think. This is how this tool is working. What I... 
let's see here let's make this brush smaller and let's try to do this here because this was in the shadows okay let's zoom out control zero to fit in and this is before this is after before and after i think it's starting to look very very good Let's take here as well a little bit this highlights and just dial them down and let's use dodge a little bit and make an eye catch here. This was okay something like that. Something that your eye can linger on. Houses. Okay. Let's see. Before, after, before, after. It's starting to look okay. I think I'm doing this so my eye is going to notice every change that I'm doing at this point. And okay. Now what I'm trying to do here is darken a little bit this stone wall just a little bit so we are going to use the dodge tool the burn tool sorry and make this brush a little bigger and use 20 percent and let's start painting on it Make this smaller, so it will not affect this one. This I really want to make. So now, this will look cooler. So let's see. Before, after, before, after. It's like a wet stone now. Okay, so I think we're done here. Again, this is for Instagram, it's not going to be printed. Um, I think it's an eye catcher, so let's try to export this. Now, I'll show you my method. I think you'll find various way of doing it, but the tested method and the one that I know it works better is go to file, export, and save for web or you can use alt shift control s or and this is going to create a jpeg and you can see here fit in view now select jpeg quality select 70 three that's the hotspot okay in the image size select width of 180 and leave the rest like this and the quality be cubic and i know this is going to work so basically this is our compression so photoshop compresses better than the image compressor that Instagram has. So let's fit in view. Let's look at our image and click save. The roaches, click save. And now before posting it to Instagram, let's edit the rest of the images and I will show you a couple of tips and tricks how to upload direct from your computer.